Hi everyone! Um, so today I wanted to share something fun with you. Kirsty Rice has um, has reached out to me a while ago and she asked whether I would like to review her new book and I was very excited because I actually was familiar with Kirsty, oh, sorry Christy Rice's art and so it was quite honorable that she would reach out to me and want to send me her book and of course it's about watercolor and flowers which we love so here it is i'm just going to briefly show you the box because it's really pretty i just hope it can fit oh it can fit in the frame because it's quite large so here is the box basically the book comes inside here and you have a little um introducing the art for joyce's sake journal information here and then here is the artist herself look at that you can i can hold it up to you like this you can pause and read and basically the message is positive art creating and that's why i i love this the the idea of it is that you know we take our watercolors and we go on a little journey so it has the when it says there pull out by the yellow ribbon is basically this ribbon here which is pretty i like the color scheme i like the um turquoisey teal background of this with the mustard yellow so this is the front of the book this is the back of the book now um christy has loads of um like coloring books as well and loads of other products so you should check it out on her website which is um let's see the watercoloringbooks.com and then you can also find her on instagram and youtube kirsty sorry if i'm saying kirsty it's Christy is just the um there's an English name Kirsty and for some reason Kirsty is always coming up with these Christmas shows uh, before Christmas so I think this is why I'm starting to think about um Kirsty because of the season changing but it's Christy Rice so uh, and I hope it's Rice not Rice sorry <laughs> sorry for butchering your name but yes yeah, so it is um her Instagram right here Christy the painter if you want to follow and um, so let's look into the book so the book is called the art for joy's sake journal and it is designed to be like a journal it's a really good size so if you like if you like um, a format like this you'll really enjoy it because you will fill up a nice page and like I said, it's a new book, so it came out in 2019. Here's the letter from the artist. Again, feel free to pause and read to just familiarize yourself with what the um, artist wants you to experience from this book. Um, so the paper is, um, of course, not artist grade watercolor paper, but it's supposed to be good enough for watercoloring. So you're going to do your watercolor straight in here. The floral illustrations are right there. So from the way I understand the way this has been done is um, there is a piece of um, art on one page which has been lined out uh, digitally. And this then has been copied onto the page next to it, which means you can then create similar thing to here. So obviously this is not how uh, Christy uh, paints with these gray lines and outlining. It's just done for you so that you can then, instead of starting on a completely white black, uh, sorry, white blank page, you then have some guidelines of what should be where. And then you also get the same image twice. Um, so I guess here you are 
trying maybe to copy the work or learn from how uh, this works by kind of looking at what is going on here and then here you have the opportunity to do the same thing but on your own so perhaps using other colors or just going completely wild and off the uh, track and just do your own thing here maybe use some different mediums even if you like um, so there's the make the first step the easiest and you have a little exercise on this page so let's read it together it says here we have been told a lie friends the first step is always the hardest i don't agree it doesn't need to be you see the first step if small enough can be the easiest to take so let's flip this concept around in regard to painting if the blank page scares you what tiny step can you first take to combat it. Fill a cup of water and set it next to your paints. Splatter some random color on the page. See, you have begun. Now continue here in this page. Want to paint a flower? Start with a petal or one stroke. This first tiny step is all you need. So then she gives you also lovely little exercises here to do basically what you want and kind of just get into it. And that's that's fun. Um, and then you've got loads of her florals. I love this color scheme here. It's just so pretty. So you can see this is how she actually draws. So not these digital gray lines. These are there to help you to start but this is her style I've seen it many times sometimes she uses a graphite pencil um, to kind of outline her work afterwards um, sometimes it's beforehand and then watercolor on top but it's just really really beautiful florals I love her style so it says here what I used mission gold watercolor how I used it seven color limited palette of bold brush strokes um, exaggerated contrast between light dark muted bright and color so was this the one before no this is a different one which is this one so yeah, you get these snippets of information. It doesn't uh, have too much to, uh, to for you to read. So it's mostly to have fun and mostly to learn how to do this and then, you know, use it as learning steps and then eventually you won't need this. This is like a coloring book, but extra, you know. it's um, It does really try to teach you on top of just letting you color in some uh, parts. And then again, there are also some recipes which I felt, felt quite nice. So who would this book be great for? I would say middle-aged ladies like myself <laughs> and anyone above. Um, would this be good for younger people? Possibly. Um, it, it is a fun book. I don't see anything wrong. But I just think for, you know... Um, women or men who enjoy um, art as well as the domestic life of cooking and being creative not just in the art book but also in the kitchen and just in general doing things in the house in a creative way and just love that life I think this is sort of aimed more for for that uh, group of people uh, is my opinion but of course this is great for anyone who would enjoy coloring and loves watercolors particularly particularly if they are beginners or um, kind of intermediate uh, people so yeah this is really fun I just want to do like a little segment really quickly for you just to give it a go and see how the paper reacts to watercolor um, so I'm just going to find something so here quick ways to get artistically motivated so every other page or every other few pages there is something new there so it's not uh, completely structured you don't get the same thing just different patterns you do get little uh, new things sprinkled around the book like different recipes I think there are a few of those here and then just a few little extras I actually really like these plums they look delicious so I might do 
a plum or something. Let's see. I'm just going to give you a little flip through so you get a better idea of how many pages you have um, to color here. Again, another exercise, which is paint swatches of some color combinations you love. Now, this is fun. I love doing that in my own uh, art journals because you can learn so much. The two colors you would put together, you wouldn't necessarily think go together. But once you see them on paper, it might really surprise you. The other thing before I forget, actually, is the uh, pages. I hope you can see that. There we go. They are rose gold. So I'm just going to close the book. So that's a nice little touch there as well. Um, so never be afraid to share your work. So it's filled with just, you know, positive art um, affirmations to get you out of your uh, fears perhaps to to do some art when you are not sure whether you can do it whether you're good enough not good enough you know all those things mind blocks that we go through um, time to time so all of us um, do that so basically nothing new there <laughs> and it just helps you to get out of that mindset and just create 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 so there you go lovely so okay you can find her books um in tj max papyrus and bad bath and beyond which i think is a it's like um home sense shop here for us in uk so this is this is the american one so let me quickly try and do some painting Okay, if you're a complete beginner, I'm just going to talk you through what I would use if I wanted to approach something like this. So I'm going to use a cloth. This is, um, you know, those um, muslin cloths that you get when you have a baby. <laughs> or when they throw up or do all sorts of other fun things, you always have those um, there. So I have loads left from when Mason was um, a baby. And um, so they're fantastic for using that because you can just throw them in a washing machine once in a while and just give them a wash. But uh, uh, anyway, so this is, I find, much better than um, kitchen paper or like napkins that are made out of paper fiber because they obviously fall apart and the fibers can be annoying sometimes. So I've got a, a jar of water. Now I picked to do this, um, what is this? I'd say it's like a clementine or an orange. And I really like the colors here. So I want to be inspired by this color scheme. And let's see, I'm just going to use this as a guide because I quite like the turquoise and the green. I like the orange and the green, the like the forest green and the like, like, um, what looks like almost a lizarin crimson type of pink with a little bit of magenta maybe with some Hansa yellow. So these are the colors that I'm thinking about when I'm seeing this. And so this is what I'm going to replicate here. But if another day I want to do my own thing, I have the opportunity to do it here on the next page because you always get two pages. I hope this makes sense. So what I'm going to do is for my brushes. Now... Because this paper is thick enough to do watercolor, but it's not 300 GSM, which I would go for with a lot of water, I'm going to use my Jackson's 10-0 quill. This is a working horse. I have recommended this brush throughout, so I would use that on this size of illustration. I'm also going to get my... my Jackson's watercolor um, <clears throat> palette. I'm just going to clip it out of there like so and keep this somewhere nearby so I can actually see the, um, the swatch card right there. Okay, so let's go. We have, so Hansa Yellow, similar to this one, which is Gamboge, New Gamboge. And then I've got a few pinks down here, which is, I think, Quinacridone pink. Uh, all of that would be quite great. So, okay, this is the Daniel Smith palette. I will use a number of, like, a limited palette here, which is what Kirsty does, I think. Christy, sorry, Christy. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, and so I will do the same. Okay, 
So I'm going to start with this clementine and I am going to start with alizarin crimson, f um, sorry, alizarin crimson, queen nacridon pink, first of all. So I'm going to load my brush and just try to imitate what I can see. Now imitation is sometimes the best way to learn before you can jump onto your own journey of watercolor. Sometimes you need to imitate so that you understand how to create certain things. Now, when I can start feeling that there is not enough water on my brush, what I can then do is just keep on adding some water. So at this point, I've just kind of done a little bit of work here, and now I'm going to go with the new gamboche and just connect it here and there, and that's going to give us a lovely mix and blend of colors. At this point I'm going to go into something a little bit more yellow which is Indian yellow and that is a beautiful color just to break it up a little and not have just two colors. And then to darken it up I'm just going to go into one next to it which is quinacridone magenta and just sprinkle it into a few areas not too much I don't want it everywhere. So far so good. And then the there's this yellow bot here, so let me color that in. And then I'm going to go into Green Appetite Genuine. And it's not really the color that she used here. She used something a bit darker, but I quite like this. So I can see a little bit of warping there, but nothing too much. I'm also going to drop in some of the yellow into here and there. And now I'm going to just have some fun splashing some color onto paper really is the best way to feel better if you're not having a great day or if you are having a great day then make it even better so now I'm going to try what she's done here by adding a blue or turquoise now the best thing or the closest thing I have in my palette right now is the cascade green so it's a turquoisey type of a green and I think that would be lovely. I haven't used it in leaves yet, but why not starting now? So I'm leaving some highlights just because I like it, why not? And then I'm going to do the same over here. Touch it with a yellow a little. And I think I'm going to leave it at that point. Just need a little bit more just to connect it right here so this is how quick it is how easy it is let me dry it and then come back and see how the paper has taken it there's only a little bit of warping um but you know look how much water i've used there okay i am back and the um so the paper matters a lot with watercolors and what i notice is that the vibrancy of the watercolors um has gone a little bit down but it's obviously still very vibrant so what you can do but this is something you can do when the watercolors have dried is actually doing some glazing so what you uh, can do is just add a little bit more watercolor just on top in some areas if you want to bring up a little more brightness and lift certain areas so you can totally do it so I'm actually going to go back into that alizarin crimson and just darken it up in a few areas like so so you can see immediately we're getting some depth in there and I also feel like adding a little yellow just in the middle now with leaves 
I'm always quite cautious because I tend to overwork things. So I'm just going to do a little bit of glazing. Ever so slightly. Like so. And this one just leave it as it is because I quite like it. That's it. There we go. And then maybe just dab a little bit of this green into there so we have some sort of connection. And then same thing here. A bit of green and a bit of that. And just a tiny little bit of this yellow into here again. And then lift if you need to lift. Okay, so that's what you can do to um, correct that and just bring your piece a little bit more to life and um, just do a, a little glaze is what I would recommend to do. So I'm going to dry it once more. Okay, so <clears throat> keep in mind that sometimes if you overheat the paper, it can start um, changing the structure and then becomes actually more uh, warped. So it is up to you whether you do that or not. But uh, for the purpose that I was doing it today, I quite liked it. So now you can see the colors are um, nice and vibrant and the glaze actually helped it. Now, what I wouldn't recommend is on this paper to go back and forth too many times. So try to lay the water with the pigment, with the watercolor on the paper in a light stroke, maybe just couple of strokes and don't go back and forth because when you're a beginner you tend to do that number one mistake is just overworking things now that will cause two issues one it will overwork the watercolor and second it will start to make the paper disintegrate it disintegrate so basically fall apart um so basically avoid those two mistakes that beginners tend to do it quite often and then what you can do is either leave the first watercolor um, layer dry naturally and then come back to it or you can use a heat tool like I've just done now and then set it quickly and then go with the second layer uh, immediately after and again don't uh, you know rub the paper and try to overwork things just lightly touch the watercolor on top where you feel it's needed to create that glaze and to lift things I don't know whether um, Christy actually uses that technique I think she doesn't do many glazes from what I remember but I might be wrong I'm sure she does do glazes at one point uh, or another but um, I think typically she tends to just you know drop the watercolors and let them kind of uh, get friendly on the paper rather than glazing things but this is just my view this is my opinion uh, you can do of course the way you like to do it so I just wanted to give you a few tips what I felt um, would be um, best suited but of course it is totally up to you so that's my little take on the beautiful clementine uh, or orange here and then it would look so pretty if you just colored everything over and I think what I would also recommend to do or this is actually what I would do is go over these gray lines so that you end up with no white in between and that way you would cover these gray lines and it would look more like a painting rather than just coloring in and that's another thing you can do and of course if you like it a lot you can maybe rip it out and frame it because the patterns are really really pretty here um, or even frame one of her um, original pieces here um, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. A perfect little gift now for the coming up Christmas, either for yourself or for someone else. And um, check out Christy's um, YouTube channel. I'll try to link it down below as well. So thanks for watching and see you soon.